very interesting uh, for the sex side of the house on uh, casualties, and we're we're talking uh, people who got killed here. And uh, the male side, as you imagine, was the largest, six thousand two hundred plus. And there's been 138 female casualties between the two conflicts. Which is an issue we're going to discuss, an article specific to women veterans, because that's on the increase, it's on the rise. Yeah, and unfortunately so is homelessness amongst female veterans. For sure, and as you can imagine, folks, the largest uh, service branch that has had uh, suffered casualties is the Army, followed by, I believe, the Marines. Marine Corps, and then uh, uh, third is Army National Guard. And then Navy, Air Force, Army Reserves, and Marine Reserves. So, you know, all branches are impacted. And as, you, as Kieran said, as you can imagine, the Army and the Marines more impacted because they're the frontline combatants uh, in most cases. And we're always bringing up the word sacrifice, the sacrifices. Well, this is obviously the ultimate sacrifice that the service member makes as well as their family members. Absolutely. And you look at the breakdown between ages 20 to 24, uh, 2,866. The bulk of the, the war dead is in that age group. These kids are just starting their life. Uh, sacrifice, giving up their life to keep us free back here at home. That's right, and doing it in an all-volunteer force, I might add. So, but don't don't stop there. The next age group, again, young young men and women, 25 to 29, represent 1,520 combat deaths. Uh, but it all, goes all the way up to 50 to 59 years old. Yeah, and we're, you wouldn't think of people being a 50 to 59 group. I mean, there's 48 guard people, and reserves. Guard and reserves. They, those are the older veterans that are over there fighting, and I, I see them in my office uh, when they come in for help with claims, and you know I'm going, wow, how's this guy in the military? He's too old. <laughs> but they're over there serving, and some of them have been featured on particular shows on television. I know I'll, I'll throw a shout-out to Headline News. They do, uh, I think Robin Mead in the morning does a, a salute to the troops, which I really right. appreciate. Yes. Uh, she featured a... A gentleman who was coming up on age 60 over there as a staff sergeant in the Marines. But regarding all these combat deaths, some 2,447 were due to hostile action. And what's the number on the IEDs? Yeah, and th this is why you talk about... Uh, what's that IED mean anyway? Well, IED is an improvised explosive device that you may or may not have heard about that term before. And that's the one causing the signature injury out of these wars. Which is? which is traumatic brain injury. You get, you get, we've talked about that before. You get that delicate little brain rattled around due to a concussion from an explosion in your hard shell skull, and it does not do good things for you. Well, 386 have uh, passed away because of helicopter accidents or crashes, uh, 29 because of airplane crashes. There have been a number of non-combat deaths, and some of those... You know, you don't know what to think. That's kind of a generalized category, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you'd have to think most of those are still conflict-related. They're, they're uh, not due to a person's own misconduct. And every one of those, I assure you, is investigated in what they call a line of duty determination. But when they put data out like this, I, just, I presume in the in the positive for our troops, and that, you know, it was something caused by the conflict over there. I mean, hey, you wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the conflict. And Precisely. Maybe they were rolling uh, an MRAP off of a trailer or something, and he, it was a crush injury. Who knows? Yeah, or the <clears throat> terrain turned your vehicle over uh, because, you know, Afghanistan is, is not... Uh, it's not I-95. It's, not, it's not, not a four-lane highway there, folks. And I always hearken back to what Major General Buchanan said when we interviewed him last November. And I asked him uh, how, it, how the morale was with the frontline troops. He stopped me dead in my tracks and said, look, you're over here. you got a bullseye on your back. There is no front line. And that's important to remember. But uh, let's throw some good news out there. Folks, if you have not ever won an AVET Project prize pack... Okay, if you've never won before, we haven't done this in a while, but AVET Project has a nice little gift pack that we're going to send out to the third caller to WMEL. That's 321-631-1300. So if you'd like a nice little prize pack from AVA and you're the third caller to 321-631-1300, you're going to get the gift of the day. Little Light good up news them here. phones and get this gift pack. That's right. 
Now, we, we mentioned the, uh, the female population in this whole uh, armed services deal. I know that there's some good stories out there about females getting some help with employment, but uh, the latest number is that one in three of our female warriors, our war fighters, those gals that have gone over there, as you said, Glenn, voluntarily fought to keep us free, uh, one in three between the ages of 18 and 24 was out of work last month. Oh, yeah, it's That's terrible. 30%, 33%. 33%. They go over there and risk their lives to support us and to keep us free and, and protect our liberties, and they come back here and they can't find work. Yeah, 22% unemployment rate compared to 7.8% for non-military women. Now, that, there's Folks, something wrong with this picture. Exactly. I mean, are you hearing these numbers? These aren't just statistics. This is real, true-to-life stuff. Out there in the civilian marketplace, you stand a much better chance if you've never been in the military of getting a job than if you've been in the military yeah, and th served. Apparently a three times better chance than if you've never been in the military. And, and you know, let me reiterate my personal feelings and, and a, a truth uh, as far as I'm concerned, and that's whether it be a woman veteran or a male veteran, these are the cream of America's crop, and you, you saw the statistics. The younger ones are bearing the brunt of the casualties over there because they're, that's the mo most of our force structure is made up of younger people. And if they choose not to make the military a career and get out, you've got the cream of America's crop there. Forget all this stuff you hear about. You, you don't believe that everybody who comes back has post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes, there are those who need help in that regard, but there's help available. That you've got, you, you know, the military's already done the screening for you. They, the, the, I guarantee you, they know how to come to work on time. They know how to be loyal. They know, they know how to be dedicated, and they know how to get the job done. And they are armed with all kinds of talents that every employer would be happy to get. So let's reverse these statistics. Let's make a concerted effort to hire veterans. Wow, you, you got that so right. And, you know, of the 2.2 million Americans who have deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, some 300,000 have been women, 300,000. So, like you said, Glenn, we got to change this uh, paradigm to where the guys and gals coming out of service after serving honorably have a much better chance of getting a job because of the skill sets and just the general discipline and regard for authority that they have. Oh, absolutely. And I... I, I recall back in the 70s, uh, if you wanted, if you were a veteran, whether you be a retiree or a veteran who had just gotten off active duty without serving the 20 years for retirement, and you wanted to get a job with the airlines, you could get a job, snap your finger with the airlines, because the airlines knew all these traits that veterans had, and that's the kind of traits they wanted in their employees working for the airlines. Now, you know, okay, airlines, let's go back to the 70s and help out here, too. Whatever it takes, because only 1% of our American young people are defending this nation. 1%. 1%. Percent. That means... The cream of the crop, by the way. Exactly. So I think we can do better. If you run a small business or know somebody that does, encourage them to... There are tax advantages. I mean, there's plenty of... The president just signed a bill that's going to provide tax credits to hiring... What is it, Vow to Hire Heroes or something like yeah, that? Vow to uh, Hire Heroes and the, the, the tax credit, and I think there's even some moolah involved, up to uh, 5000 or so dollars per veteran that you hire. So, you know, that's a, for especially for a small business, that's probably a great incentive. No kidding. And you're going to get a, a very special uh, employee, when somebody that's going to be dedicated and stick with you. You bet. Uh, along those same lines... We're talking about the uh, great number of folks getting out of the military. Well, some of them are being forced out of the military. There's a bunch of senior NCOs that are about to get the pink slip. Some 600 senior enlisted members uh, in the Navy are going to be released basically because uh, determinations made that they're top-heavy and their budget is such that they're going to be letting go of some 593 sailors going to be asked to uh, transfer to the reserve or retire by September 30th. So even though that seems like a small number, 600, it's indicative of this whole issue. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned just a couple minutes ago, uh, the military is a young person's game. And, you know, when they start, 
getting force cuts because of severe budget cuts to the Department of Defense. They're looking, they're looking at the top to, to get people uh, cut out. And of course, they're, hopefully they're getting people, and a lot of these from the stats I saw here were offered the ability to retire, so they didn't lose, uh, lose, lose out on that. They took them in a, in a group where they were 19 years or greater uh, years of service. So, uh, but, you know, uh, this is not going to happen just to the Navy Reserve, as th this article is about. It's, it's across the board. And, you know, the whole topic is, uh, and you see it in the newspaper in various forms. I'm not a big newspaper fan, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see it in there that, you know, this, there's a lot of deep concern about the a loss of the ability of our military to protect this country the way it should be with the severe cuts they're going to give Department of Defense. And why are you doing it at a Department of Defense? I can name you several departments off the top of my head. Labor, that, education, that, environment. <laughs> that uh, America can continue to run along just fine without. Well, I'm not sure that the Department of Labor, Education, Environment, or any of those are actually in the Constitution, but I'm darn sure that the defense of our country is. Absolutely, and that's an excellent, excellent it's, point. It is the imperative for the... the uh, government of this country to defend our interests, both the homeland and wherever we might be. And here, this is where they're looking to make cuts. So it's kind of nuts. But uh, there's an article about the situation in South Dakota, which is kind of an interesting tie-in with all this, that uh, the county veteran service offices, now Glenn, you're the supervisor of the Brevard County Veteran Service Office. You right. have uh, 66 counterparts, 66 other people in this Right. state, this great state of Florida, that do your job. Uh, and y'all you, do a wonderful job. And as a matter of fact, folks, I know we've mentioned it before, but Glenn, you were awarded the highest honor by the Veterans of Foreign Wars for having the best service office in the state of Florida. Yeah, and we're, we're mighty proud of that, but uh, we translate that into the top, ser top quality service for our veterans and their survivors, uh, getting you the benefits earned, uh, by cutting through all the legalese stuff that the, the VA, you, you, you just can't do it by yourself with the VA unless you have a background in filing claims and, yeah, or and, law. and law. Yeah, <laughs> and even some lawyers out there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we've had a few on the show that are wonderful. Not all lawyers are. Mm. Okay, look, let's just move on. <laughs> what I'm suggesting here is that y'all get behind and support your county veteran service offices because in South Dakota, they're looking to defund the entire program. Yeah, apparently in that state and every, well, most states are, are different. Not every state is like Florida where every county has a county veteran service office funded by the county. In, in uh, South Dakota, is being funded by the, the state, state I believe. and the state is giving... Uh, because of cuts from the federal government and all that, uh, particularly on the military side of the house, is looking hard at doing away with county veteran service officers. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I hope somebody from South Dakota out there is listening and, and can rally up some people because, you know, the valuable service they provide in getting the benefits earned by our veterans and their service to our country. What's it translate into? What translates into big bucks? I mean, if you just want to look at it from an economic standpoint, which most politicians do. Yeah, I mean, in my office alone, we have around nine thousand uh, claim files, and that brings in on a continuing basis eighty-five million dollars to eighty-five our county million dollars in annually. Brevard County. In Brevard County alone, and and more than that, there's over a hundred million. 120 million comes in, and so that means there's people out there that don't see us or have gotten maximum. They're at 100% service-connected disabled, or they're a surviving spouse with the only benefit they can get. Uh, but you know that's that's a dramatic figure, and you that translates everywhere you go. I guarantee you, I can go to every state and pull their data up, and and just from an economic standpoint. Disabled veteran payments are pumping a big chunk of change into that county and into that state. And even thinking about doing away with that is terrible. And, and, and uh, 
And I want to mention stupid. that, yeah, and, and here in Brevard County, I know Glenn's situation. You are absolutely swamped at the County Veterans Service Office there in Bravo Building at the Vieira Government Complex. Folks, you're going to get the best care you can with filing your claims. If you have questions about VA benefits, they're credentialed, uh, educated, and continuing to be educated. You go through a, a regular continuing education for it. Well, yeah, every day is an, is an education. You, you learn something new every day. I've been there over 21 years, and I learn something new every day. And, folks, it's such a valuable service because... He needs more people. I, he won't say this, but I will. They need more people in this particular county veteran service office right here in Brevard County. So please, I encourage you to jump on the phone and call your local county commissioner and say, you know what, I heard that the uh, county veteran service office is understaffed. They need a secretary. They could use a couple more service officers. It All it does is better the county and community as a whole. It, it doesn't do anything but increase the... The entire employment picture, the entire economic picture of the county. You gotta, you gotta fund things that bring money back in, rather than programs that drain and take away tax dollars. The County Veterans Service Office brings money in and provides extraordinarily valuable services. So please call your county commissioner, whichever one it might be, and ask that they take a look at increasing the personnel at the Brevard County Veterans Service Office because it's important and in other states let this be a cautionary tale in other states they're literally looking to eliminate some of these positions we can't let that happen because the VA try as they might just is not able to reach into the communities like the County Veterans Service Offices do that's right and they they just even when they have some outreach in a couple of places that I'm familiar with it, it, it doesn't seem they're able, for whatever reasons, probably because they're, they're trying to do appeals against their bosses and, and that kind of stuff, are, are as effective Politics. as the county veteran service office is. And, you know, here's another idea that the VA had offered up some money in the past to go to the states and the counties to support operations in the county veteran service offices. We're looking to get veterans jobs, what better way than for the federal government to get involved in helping fund county veteran service offices in all of the counties and all of the states in America. It's, it's a win-win situation. The veterans and their survivors win because they get the claims earned by service our country and uh, the veterans get jobs. So it's a win-win situation. You know, you toss a lot of money away in the federal government on things that would just totally floor everybody out here, including me, if we knew where the money, some of the money was really going. And what better place to put it here? Let's, hey, Mr. Congressman, Mr. Bill Posey, Miss Sandy Adams, let's give this a, how about support a bill to do this? No kidding. So much you can do just by picking up the phone and making some noise. Folks, we still got a prize pack. AVET Project Prize Pack. If you want it, it's yours, but you got to call 321-631-1300. Glenn, we got a lot more to talk about here, but as as always, it seems the hour runs out well before we're ready. The uh, Some of the other issues that we've been talking about is uh, the, the suicide rate that's impacting our service members. Now, this is a tragedy. I don't know that it's avoidable. I guess if you can get early treatment and uh, substantial treatment to to help these folks deal with these issues, but when you consider these multiple deployments, and I know that word's thrown out a lot, but you just can't continue to put the, the human brain, the human mind, through this kind of turmoil and stress. That's right, and then and then come back into an environment where there... No work. No work, and, you know, at an unprecedented rate, and many of these people end up Either they don't have a support system, a family or, or, or others to help them out, or they lose the support system due to their behavior problems uh, due to things like post-traumatic stress disorder, which also, by the way, can be caused by traumatic brain injury. You know, injuring your brain can cause all kinds of behavioral changes. That's one of the, the things that can happen from that. And, you know, the, there are more and more effective treatment programs out there and I think that that's a wonderful thing but we, there's too much going on in the way of suicide now and that that's why the VA came out with a suicide hotline a couple years ago it's been now 
And, and let me share on that subject, okay? I was in Oregon doing some yellow ribbon events, which is uh, programs designed specifically to help the garden reserves as they come back, get demobilized, learn how to reintegrate back into civilian society in the workplace, traveled around the state to about six different locales, giving briefings and what have you, and the, uh, the suicide hotline came up on an advertisement in Bend, Oregon, of all places, saying... Uh, in preparation for this conference that was going to take place, this demobilization yellow ribbon program, saying, call this number if you're having a problem. No problem. I grabbed my phone and dialed it just to see what it was. It's a general hotline. This is what the VA and the DOD is promoting. It's a general nationwide hotline that doesn't deal specifically with vets whatsoever. Well, supposedly, and I know you dialed it, and I haven't. I, that's shame on me. I need to dial it and see if what I've heard is true. Supposedly, when you, it is a national suicide hotline, not a not a VA hotline right, right. per se. But supposedly they put you, me on hold to begin with. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not good. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that <laughs> that's out somebody there. Somebody <laughs> potentially calling that's going to commit suicide, and you put them on hold, or something very wrong with that. Uh, but anyway, you're supposed to be uh, as soon as they find out you're a veteran through a couple quick questions up front. They're supposed to. Uh, turn you over to somebody on the veteran side that, that are able and understand veterans' issues, get that channeled all the way down to the closest, nearest VA medical care facility that will get uh, immediately in contact with you and go from there to try and get you lined up and, and programs, A, to immediately prevent you committing suicide. No then, kidding, isn't that the B, purpose? B, get you some longer-range care to, to solve the issues that, that led to getting to this crisis point in your life. So. And I truly hope they have made modifications to that program because when I called, I got upset. Now imagine, I'm not, I wasn't suicidal, obviously, I was just testing the system. But if a man or woman is in crisis because of multiple tours and post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury and what have you, and they call this and they're getting the runaround, you're going you're gonna to make a bad situation worse. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And Throw and, gasoline on a fire. Yeah, they, they've... Uh, and, and let me throw out the crisis line real quick. It's 1-800-273-8255-PRESS-1. It's 1-800-273-8255. If you're having a crisis out there, give those folks a call. And as soon as, as, soon as it's picked up, press 1. And I think that's what the fix is that was a problem when Let's you called so. it. put you into a channel with people that are... Uh, trained to help veterans, not not everybody. Before we go on the air again next week with another episode of American Warrior Radio, I will call that number and check and see if they've made those fixes. I sure, I, sure. I will also. Okay, well, we're going to bring you, and we always do that. We bring you the straight stuff here. A uh, couple things I want to mention. There is a pre-Daytona bash taking place right now, the Cobb Society. This is a uh, an association of motorcycle riders and enthusiasts that do a pre-Daytona bash. Now these folks have been very supportive of AVEP Project. If you're looking for something to do, you happen to be down near the Kissimmee Sports Arena today, 17th through the 18th. Uh, it's off Hoagland Boulevard by the airport. Definitely check it out because it's all going to a great cause. And uh, that seminar we talked about last week is still supposedly going to be planned up at Tyco. What's the day and time for that, Glenn? Yeah, again, it's on uh, two different times on Wednesday, February 22nd. So that's coming up next week. Uh, 10 to 12, and then the second session, uh, and both the sessions are the same as far as information, 2 to 4. Uh, you can call Julie at 637-637. 3153 for reservations. That's, and you do have to make reservations. And you do need a reservation. Again, it's Julie at 637 3153. We're going to talk about uh, the aid and attendance program that will provide, uh, can provide some additional help for people, particularly if they go into an assisted living facility. And they're going to talk about some estate planning and some, some uh, other mo money planning for you. It's going to be a really Valuable event. Again, that's Wednesday, February 22nd. Give Julie a call. And AVET Project will be present. Folks, also, there's a veterans men's group at East Coast Christian Center we just found out about. It meets every second and fourth Tuesday of the month from uh, 6 to 8 p.m., so check that out. 
Folks, thank you for joining us on American Warrior Radio this week. We'll be back again next week for another edition of American Warrior Radio. And as always, Glenn, don't forget, thank a vet. All right, that is in the can. <clears throat> Pretty soon I'm going to have five folders of stuff we haven't got to. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, I know you, you don't have any time, but like this one, I was just piecing it together because I know, I mean, well, we that's, don't all I, that's all I've been doing, throwing stuff in here, and I know once we get talking about something, we can oh, put, yeah. put the connectivity and everything to yeah. it. So. Yeah, there's never a shortage. No. <laughs>